Recently, I set myself up a home assistant server using a Raspberry Pi, and it's pretty cool. I can see various devices, smart plugs, and things like that in my house. But one thing I wanted was the temperature and humidity in every room. So I went on AliExpress and I bought several of these Xiaomi temperature and humidity um, sensors, because I've seen a load of posts online saying that they're great, they work with Home Assistant, and things like that. The problem was, when I got them, they didn't work with Home Assistant. Super annoying. Basically, the manufacturers changed the firmware and now they're locked down to only work with their um, their cloud service that you have to sign up for and you have to have an app on your phone and all that kind of crap which I'm not really into so I don't really want that but I've done some research and I found a way that you can actually modify the firmware on these to make them compatible with Home Assistant via Zigbee which is exactly what I want. So there's a load of videos and explanations on how to do this, but they tend to be using older versions of these devices, which can be updated just over the air. You don't actually have to open them up. But unfortunately, because of this new firmware so locked down, you now have to open the device and connect to it manually using wires. So it's a bit more painful, but it's still really easy. And almost anyone can do it with very limited tools. You don't need any soldering irons or anything like that. So let's crack on. So for this video, we need a few things. The main one being the Xiaomi Bluetooth uh, Digital Thermometer number two. So that's a bit of a long-winded name, but this is the one where we can easily update the firmware. And I say easily updates, it used to be a much easier. But unfortunately, Xiaomi, or however you say that company's name, have actually um, changed the firmware to stop you being able to update it um, wirelessly. So there is a way of um, being able to rewrite the firmware on that, but unfortunately it involves actually opening up the unit and reprogramming it via the UART connection. To access that UART connection, you need to use a USB to UART programmer. So this is one here, I've linked it in the description of this video and you can buy the same one. Um, so this is basically one side is a USB, the other side is the UART. You can see it does either 3.3 or 5 volts, which is handy this is a 3 volt unit so make sure you have it on the 3.3 volt setting and you can see the terminals here we've got VCC we've got ground we've got transmit we've got receive we don't need anything other than these left hand free free terminals so VCC ground and TX there's no two-way communication we're basically transmitting a new firmware from the computer onto this device, nothing's coming back the other way. In addition to that, you need some jumper cables. So these, these need to be female one side, so they can plug onto these, and they need to be male on the other side, um, so they can plug onto the circuit board in the um, thermometer. I'll show you all about that in a moment. To get inside and to actually access that circuit board, um, you need a couple of screwdrivers. You need one with a very thin, fine blade, so this is like a really sharp blade. And then you need one, I don't know what it's called, I'll try and zoom in on it. Maybe you can see what it says on there, I, uh, I don't know. I don't know how to call it, it's kind of, it's not hexagonal, it's almost like a star-shaped thing. Um, but it's really, really very small. So let's crack on, let's open this up, let's give it a go. So I've turned the thermometer over, and if you look carefully, you can see there's little holes where the, the top lid can come off, and this is so you can change the battery. So if you just slide your screwdriver in there and gradually go around the corners, twisting the blade, you'll hear relatively alarming little pops. Just keep doing it, be gentle, and there you go. Battery comes out relatively easily. Let's pop that out. And now you can see, if I just zoom in, that here and here are two little screws, so we need to take those out. And now go back to the other screwdriver blade. This next part's a little bit um, nerve-wracking. It's pretty difficult to get this top pl um, plastic panel out. But anyway, start at the opposite side to the um, battery clip. That, that popped out pretty nice, sometimes they don't. I've done four of these now and this is the uh, fifth one. And there's the circuit board. You don't actually need to take it out any further, but you can do. It just lifts out. Try not to touch this part because this is the LCD screen. There's the, the um, connector of the LCD and on the other side of the board you can see um, it connects to that strip there. So when you put it back, you must put it back so um, it basically sits in the right position and you can see it's got these two plastic um, sort of pillars there for the board to position correctly. So we can move this out of the way. 
question is now how do we wire this up so let's connect our USB to UART cable so this is my USB port from my laptop you can just about see that that switches on let me move these screws out of the way so I don't um, short anything out this is where I need my jumper wires so I'm going to use um, white for VCC and black for ground and purple for data so as you can see on the board it basically labeled up this terminal here is obviously for the battery and it goes to a negative terminal of the battery. This angled bracket thing basically touches the side of the battery and that's the positive terminal. So your black wire goes to ground. Just wedge it under there. You're going to need your, your other hands. Take the white wire and wedge it under there. Okay. And then the last wire is this purple wire. And this is the tricky thing. So there's a pad there, P14. You need to hold this against P14. So if you can see, it's this one here on the sort of right hand side of the board. So basically opposite the chip, it's here and you touch it on there and you need to keep that held in as you're uploading the firmware. So that's essential. When you go into the website, and I'll show you that in a moment, you must hold um, that pin onto there. So it's pretty tricky. You need quite a few hands. So normally what I'd do is I'd leave the board like that without my other hand so I can use my other hand to move the mouse and then just as I'm hitting upload the firmware I hover over and press like that. So let's give it a go. Okay so now we've got the unit open we're ready to install this sort of intermediate firmware. This basically reverts it back to its uh, an earlier version by the manufacturer one that you can actually update online. So it's a two-step process. We're going to update via the, using the UART to begin with, and then we'll be able to update via Bluetooth or whatever wireless protocol it uses. It's basically two websites, it's really easy. The first website you need to go to is this one here, and you can open your COM port and you should see um, a new COM port wherever your UART adapter is plugged in, and choose file, and the file you really want is this, is this ATC OTA 4000.bin. So we open that, and this is where you need multiple hands. So I've got my purple wire, and I'm hovering it over pin 14, and I'm sort of pushing it down now with quite a reasonable bit of force. With my left hand, I'm gonna go over and hit the right to flash button. It waits five seconds, I guess, so you can get the cable in the right place. And now you can see it's actually writing and it's kind of crucial that whilst this is going on, you yeah, don't move that purple wire. You keep it pressed on that pad 14. It doesn't take that long, you know, less than, I don't know, 20 seconds, something like that. We'll see in a moment. Maybe that was a bit of an exaggeration, 20 seconds. Seems a little bit longer. So there it's done. It took 35 seconds, not so bad. But now I can take off that pin, that pad and I can basically disconnect this unit from the computer. So now we can reassemble this. Let's just have a quick look what's on the board whilst we're here. So on this side of the board, believe it or not, that's the actual temperature and humidity sensor. It's absolutely tiny. There's not much else on this board. I can't read the number on this chip, so I don't know what it is. Not really got a clue. It might be a level shifter or something like that. On this side of the board, you've got a few discrete components, probably resistors and capacitors. This is the microcontroller that controls everything. That's a crystal oscillator. And as I already mentioned, this is the connector to the LCD screen. So let's get this reassembled. So the microcontroller, the, the, the pads go there on that side like this. And I just gently let it drop down and then shake it. And critically, you can see that there's a, a white pillar there and a sort of a white pillar there. They must be in the right position. If not, when you put it back together, you'll, you'll basically smash it to bits, the LCD screen. Ask me how I know. The next thing to go back is this plastic place and make sure you put it this way around, it looks a bit counterintuitive because this cutout you'd think goes there, but it doesn't. You can tell it goes this way around because the firm, the actual temperature sensor needs to be able to get to the ambient air. So there's a slot here for it. So you just push that back into place and push down until it clicks like that. It sounds a little bit um, violent, but um, it seems to be okay. Now we just put these two screws in. So. The first time I did this, I didn't put these screws in. I just put the battery straight in to test to see if it still works before I screw it back together. And the screen doesn't really work. So I think these screws basically um, 
are used to push the, the connectors of the screen and the PCB together. So it doesn't really work without them in and they need to be relatively tight. And the last thing then is to put the battery in. That's right, the positive side is the, the non sort of tab side. Put the lid on. And it should already be up and running. So that's the, the first step. The next step is to basically put the hacked firmware on that allows you to um, connect to these using um, sort of Zigbee on Home Assistant. Um, that's really easy as well, so we don't need to go back into the device again. We can do that over the air, which is really convenient. So once that intermediate firmware is on, we can actually go to this next website, this Telink Flasher, which actually converts the, the Bluetooth sensor into a Zigbee sensor. So again, we're gonna to need to put a new file on there, but first we have to connect. And to connect, you can't just use any web browser, only certain ones work. For example, Edge works, Firefox doesn't. So if you click on that connect button and you don't see anything, it's basically because you, you're using the wrong browser, I would guess. So it takes some time for those sensors to actually be picked up, I guess because they're not powered all the time, they're intermittent. So you can see, basically, you can see my the bike behind me. Um, you can see the, the Bluetooth on that, but um, not the actual sensor yet. So we, we just have to wait. It can take a couple of minutes sometimes, but they do appear eventually, and there you can see it's called ATC in a particular number. So if you have a lot of these, it can be a little bit confusing. So I recommend taking the batteries out of all of the, the ones you've already done so you know exactly which one you're looking at. So when that's connected, you basically see a screen that looks something like this. There's loads of different settings there. Um, you can't change any of that just yet. You need to actually upload um, a particular file. So here you need to go to choose file and you want this um, z03mmc.bin. So again, there's a link for that. And as soon as you've got that opened up, you can click the start flashing button and you can see at the top of the screen, it's actually uploading the, the new firmware to the actual device. So this takes quite a long time, a couple of minutes, if I remember correctly. So there you go, 230 seconds that actually took quite a long time. But now that's basically it. You don't have to touch that sensor again. It should just look like it did before you started this process, um, showing you the actual temperature and humidity on the screen and that silly smiley face, which I think you can take off. So now if we go into Home Assistant, we can go to add a new device, click on our Zigbee Home Automation, um, add a new device, and wait for it to appear. So again, I think these things turn on maybe every two minutes or every five minutes. So you actually have to wait quite some time for it to appear. There you go, it's starting the interview. That must be some kind of Zigbee communication protocol. It takes a little bit of a while again, but you can see it's a Xiaomi device. And hopefully, yep, yeah, now it's ready to use. Make sure you rename it here and put it in the room that you're gonna put it in. Um, that makes things much simpler later when you're setting up your um, home assistant to have nice dashboards and things like that. So really, that's the end of this little tutorial video. So I hope you found it useful. If you did, please like and subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next one.